Can scoliosis cause kyphosis? Scoliosis is the development of an unnatural sideways spinal curvature with rotation. Scoliosis is a three-dimensional condition, meaning it's not just a bend, but it's a bend and a twist. And this rotation is typically into the concavity of the scoliosis. A scoliosis needs to be 10 degrees or greater for it to be considered a true scoliosis. And we know scoliosis has different severities associated with it from mild, moderate to severe. Now, scoliosis can progress over time, so where a scoliosis is diagnosed doesn't necessarily mean it's where it's going to stay. A mild curve can become moderate and a moderate curve can become severe, so it's, it's, very, it's in its very nature to worsen. We know curves worsen at specific times, mostly during adolescent growth stage. It's the most common time of curve progression or rapid curve progression, but curves still progress slowly outside of these conditions, outside of this time, excuse me, and they tend to accelerate its progression over time, so as patients get older and curves get bigger, we tend to see an increased progression. Now, when we look at kyphosis, kyphosis is also an abnormal position of the spine, but it's not one that bends from the front, where we saw a sideways curvature, is a forward bending position. And it's typically referring to a thoracic kyphosis, meaning there's too much forward flexion or too much bending in the thoracic spine. And we know the thoracic kyphosis has a range somewhere between 20 and 45 degrees, but when they become excessive or beyond 45 degrees, where we're getting 50, 55, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees, this is where a patient has either a thoracic kyphosis or something called a hyperkyphosis. These two words are very often interchanged, thoracic kyphosis or thoracic hyperkyphosis. The position of the thoracic spine is normally kyphotic, but when it becomes beyond that range, it's when it's called hyperkyphosis and typically beyond 50 degrees or so. Now, kyphosis is in the opposite areas of spine, meaning in the neck or the low back, are also abnormal, but they're not called hyperkyphosis. That means if you have a kyphosis in the cervical spine, that means you're supposed to have a lordosis and you have an opposite curvature. And the same thing with the lumbar spine, you're supposed to have a lordosis, but if you have a kyphosis, that's abnormal. What we're talking about specifically in this video is hyperkyphosis of the thoracic spine. Now, there are some similarities between scoliosis and kyphosis. Like I mentioned, they both affect the spine. They've both involved development development of unnatural spinal curvatures, right? They both affect posture and spinal alignment. And even though they are definitely could be associated with different multiple other conditions and be associated with other problems, we know that these, these types of conditions, they progress a little differently. Now, the causation from one type to the other it tends mostly to be associated with idiopathic, meaning unknown cause. So we have unknown causes of scoliosis and we have unknown causes of kyphosis, meaning idiopathic. We don't have a single reason to say why it's happening. However, and we know both of these cases tend to be multifactorial. There could be many, many reasons that could be associated with developing a, scoli a scoliosis or a kyphosis. In both these conditions, we do also have cases that actually have causes, like a neuromuscular case or a congenital case, right? And congenital scoliosis means, or kyphosis means, that you're born with an abnormal shaped vertebra, which can lead to either a scoliosis or kyphosis developing, or you have a neuromuscular condition causing contractures or affecting the nerve system in a negative way or causing too much laxity, which can lead to scoliosis and kyphosis. Now, the difference between these things is that, like I said, scoliosis is more of a sideways curvature affecting the front, looking that you can see from the front of the spine, where a kyphosis is affecting the forward bending of the, of the thoracic spine that you can see from the side of the spine. So scoliosis affects more what you see from the front, where the kyphosis affects more what you can see in the side. Now, unfortunately, uh, scoliosis is known to progress quickly during adolescent stage, if this is a truly a adolescent progressing scoliosis. If it's an adolescent or a juvenile kyphosis that's occurring during growth, it can also progress quickly. But when people think of kyphosis, they think of older patients progressing slowly in their later stage life, and they slowly begin to collapse and fall forward. And that's more of an adult stage or a degenerative kyphosis, just like there would be a degenerative scoliosis that can occur with patients as they get older. Now, the connection between these two things is that they are separate conditions with their own characteristics and their own uh, mechanisms that need to be done in order to try to improve it. But sometimes they can occur together, I mean they can occur at the same time. Sometimes patients with scoliosis develop uh, uh, kyphosis. Sometimes patients with kyphosis develop scoliosis. Now, we typically, whatever, which one is considered to be the greater problem, tends to, to be the, the beginning of the diagnosis. So, if 
if you have a kyphosis and you're developing scoliosis, they're called that kyphoscoliosis. If you have a scoliosis, I mean, you have a kyphosis and you're developing scoliosis, you have a scoli kyphosis. So whichever one's happening first tends to be the first word. But kyphoscoliosis or scoli kyphosis are two diagnoses that can also be considered. That's when both of these things are happening at one time. Now, the good news is that if these conditions are occurring at the same time, very often, if you're, if you're handled by somebody who focuses on scoliosis, normally that doctor will also focus on scoliosis, and they normally can treat them together. I know here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we treat these two conditions at the exact same time using the same types of treatment process. So as we reduce one, we help and reduce the other. Now, sometimes as CURVE has more of a kyphosis and scoliosis or more of a scoliosis than kyphosis, we may be limited in how much we can improve one side versus the other, but normally we're seeing both these conditions improve at the exact same time. Um, both these conditions, like I said, can affect the normal healthy alignment of the spine, so therefore uh, responding to treatment effectively and early as before curves progress and become more stiff and become worse over time normally leads to a positive outcome. So with scoliosis and kyphosis, our recommendations are the same. We recommend treating the condition as close to the diagnosis, as small as possible because normally smaller curves, smaller misalignments respond better and younger patients respond better. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.